What is going on, everybody? We're here and we are live. As you guys know, when it's the last Sunday of the month, we always do a special stream over here. Well, it is that Sunday and it's even a more special Sunday because it's Easter Sunday. Uh, falls on a March 31st this year, which apparently uh, another holiday, another fake bullshit holiday is being celebrated at the same time. Uh, I don't care about that one, but obviously I do care about Easter. So happy Easter to all of you guys out there. Um, everybody in the chat, we are going to have some people appear. I'm sure there's a couple people that can't because of family obligations and things. That makes total 100% sense. But we have some people that are here to talk. As we talk about every, well, the last Sunday of every month, uh, for people over on my Patreon or my channel memberships that support me at the top tier level, uh, you get a chance to see those guys once a month. Instead of just listening to my dumbass talk over and over and over again and drone on about the same stuff, you get a chance to hear from a couple other people. And we do have some of those people here today. So shout out to everybody in the chat that's showing up. We might as well get introductions started. First, we got the man who's more excited that baseball season's back than almost anybody else. What's up, Biggles? Uh, you know, just uh, being disappointed in my Mets, like always. You know, every typical baseball season. So let's go, Mets. There you go. That's it. That's all I got. There you go. Good to have you, buddy. Good to see you. And uh, again, I see a lot of happy Easter's in the chat. Um, hell yes. Love to see it. Uh, Mr. J, I think it's still Easter over where you are. Yes, 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 yes. Another day. Another day. You you got an, and, you and, got an extra, way, like a na an extra national holiday on the Monday. Yeah, yeah and, and and you you know we all celebrate. So happy Trans Awareness Day. <laughs> yeah, I, as if it's not shoved in our face enough. Yeah, just so you know, these people fucking exist. Got I it. hope your I hope your president gets ratioed on Twitter today. He's close now. People uh -huh. are a tad bit uh <clears throat> unhappy. The the only thing I will say is that it's uh. This whole trans day of visibility thing is not this is not like the first time it, it it's happened on March. It's been March 31st for the past like three or four years. It just so happens that March 31st is Easter. So obviously yeah. there's a lot of people that are that are not happy about that today and rightfully so. But it's not like it, it was just, oh, they just announced that this is happening on Easter. Something. No, it's been that way for a while. Hey. People just didn't happen to notice until it happened to fall on Easter, you know, Um and now it's uh, annoying as hell. Grandmaster Chris, what's up, man? Oh, um, nothing much. Just enjoying my International Trans Day of Visibility today, and uh, I, I can't wait for, wait to get the show started because this has been quite the eventful month. We got probably what I think will be the best movie of the year so far in in Dune Two, the the Sweet Baby Ink stuff. And the acolyte getting ratioed, which brings me so much joy. That's true. And now you've got you got another movie that just released that I think globally its opening weekend was bigger than Dune Two, and that's Godzilla and Kong, uh, which I have not watched it yet, but it looks like it's doing pretty good numbers wise. Um, which is I people will refuse to get tired of these big monster movies, so they will continue to roll them out. And this one they did it on a decent budget. Like a hundred thirty million dollar budget, apparently for this movie. Um, but uh, yeah, good good opening weekend for them for for sure. We've got somebody on the stream who has never joined us, first time here on these streams. We've got crazy actual joining us today. What's up, man? Not a whole lot. How are you? We're doing good. We're doing good. Um, your profile picture says, "Please stop me." We're not gonna. We're gonna let you speak today, uh, and we're, we're gonna have a good time. So thanks for joining us, man. Thanks for having me. And of course, last for now, but not least, he had to he had to you know get his profile <laughs> picture back. We've got the man, Sir Reefer. What's up, dude? You know, I am really happy that I feel like I'm gonna have something to contribute to this conversation because, <laughs> like, I just want to thank Chris Kindred for being a fucking retard on the internet because this has been entertaining as all hell to watch. You people were unknown until all of this nobody knew who you were now everyone does it really is the the entire sweet baby ink thing which has turned into a quasi gamergate 2-esque type of thing yeah or at least enough attention is getting brought to it that it feels that way this is all their fault 
Like yeah. you had heard the name Sweet Baby Inc. There'd been a couple of people that were talking about it, but until they went out and tried to get somebody banned simply for letting people know they were involved in a game, like that's when it went next levels. That's when people started covering. That's when it became a massive wave. Uh, and it's turned into a torrent against game developers and games journalists and everything. And uh, even though maybe 10 years later, still kind of feels like we never got out of 2014. Yeah, yeah no it's one, shit. It's one of those classic shoot yourself in the foot kind of the moments. Because if it wasn't for the double whammy of Suicide Squad and trying to ban that one guy, I never would have known what, what Sweet Baby Inc. was. But now everyone does. and the, they have created a reputation of, of we're going to come into your studios and mess with your game developments. We're going to force your hand and limit your creativity. And nobody wants that. We all, all saw you. Oh, go for it. We all saw what happened with Suicide Squad and earlier with, with Spider-Man 2, where Peter Parker gets cucked. And says, you know what, Miles Morales? You can be Spider-Man way better than I can. What? Yeah, and that's just... the black the death black girl mission. That was the most fun I've ever had in a game. <laughs> All yeah, they so... had to do was avoid the autistic gaze of the internet, which is really easy because it misses a lot. And you would have been Unlike fine. Alec Baldwin. Games would have continued turning to shit. Now there's a chance that they don't turn to shit. Yeah, it's the thing is when it comes to all this stuff, there's a big difference between what for people that don't remember, I have no idea what the original Gamergate was about. There are definitely some similarities, but the the biggest difference is that people look at games journalists and like like they're a fucking joke now. They really are treated as like the lowest of the low as a result of what happened 10 years ago. And so now when all of these games journalists are rallying around each other, trying to support all of the woke bullshit, they're getting destroyed right, right and left. They're being forced to go into protected mode and pretend that they're being the victims and all this stuff. But any open post, they get ratioed. Um, and it's, it, it's just, it's embarrassing to see happen, but all they're doing is showing gamers that this time around journalists have absolutely no power. Right, like yeah, it's has has IGN actually discovered that there's a number underneath seven? Well, ironically enough, IGN IGN's you know been roasted for a couple like dumb things here and there. For the most part, in this entire like sweet baby ink thing, I feel like they've kind of been clear of a lot of the fire. Um, yeah, I haven't seen I, too I, much from IGN like piling on or, or, or anything like that or trying to defend sweet baby ink i didn't see those same things from ign that i saw from almost everywhere else Look, yeah, no, IGN outlet, is just an saying, outlet learned a lesson 10 years ago holy shit well ign now is saying that uh the person who made stellar blade has never seen a woman before and the yeah, yeah. character oh, for the <laughs> character for stellar blade is literally a woman, a woman that they that they is, scanned into the game and then is it the artist wife? his wife yeah yeah and yeah and his wife yeah and it's <laughs> like this is this is what it is and it's like get get if, fucked up yet if you want to find a group of people who have never seen a woman in real life before just look at the development team for last of us 2 like oh yeah that's a natural body of a woman Fuck, man, Harley's face look beat in Suicide Dude, Squad. Dude, looks like shit. I'm sorry. She's getting older. I didn't play... I... Oh, God, no. Compare the way I mean, that Harley I... looks in Arkham Knight. It's it's night and day. How does so, Arkham Knight have better graphics than Suicide Squad? Because the dev team gave a shit? Well, that's yeah. true. I mean, you want the simple answer? <laughs> uh, like, it's... There's no reason to play new games anymore. I've learned to wait like six months on a new game unless it's something like Helldivers. You know, like Helldivers is a little different. That's all game. Like, I like that game. That's a good one. Um, Helldivers but, is the like, third wait... best game this year. What are the other two? <clears throat> uh, Unicorn Overlord and Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. What? Okay. <laughs> okay. Way, way better. I liked Pal World. I thought Pal World was pretty good. 
I still never played Pal World. I, oh, I didn't get into it until after like the hype. I played it didn't really I played last Hell Divers. I played Hell Divers for the first time on Thursday. It was fun. Had a good time. We had a big yeah, stream over on RK Outpost Gaming. Yeah, you did. So we saw you. I had like six hundred people watching, which is kind of crazy. I mean, being Pal World, it basically you only t had a, like a month to itself, and then it was just gone. How many and people are playing that now? There's still quite a few. Especially on Xbox because Helldivers is a PlayStation and PC thing. It's not on Xbox. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, there's there's 40,000 40, people playing Pal World right now. Um, yeah, like is, it's not, and yeah. it's still technically in uh, beta, isn't it? Like, or bro, the all time they... peak for Pal World was 2.1 million people. Yeah. 2.1 million people playing. Holy fuck. At once? Yes. Yeah, dude, their servers got fucked multiple times. And <laughs> now they can actually continue testing the game with all the data that they got. You know what I mean? Like, that was a legitimate fucking beta test. That's impressive. Yeah, like, how, like how, many, how much shit did you see on YouTube of people just, like, breaking the fucking game or using abusing mechanics in such a way that the devs never intended. Like I watched a guy build his base next to a fucking boss because a cliff was shortening the range and he found somewhere where he could build the like the tether range of the boss so he found somewhere he could build outside of the tether range and then all, all of his he dropped all of his strongest pals in the fucking uh base box and they fought the boss and killed it. That's fuck? clever. Right, yeah, I mean, you're not supposed to be able to do that. Well, uh, gamers, uh, we the thing about gamers is we will always find a way to like, like break shit, get break it and get an advantage. Like for example, I I found a way in which you can beat Mass Effect One on Insanity difficulty, and all you have to do is beat the final boss, and all. It's like you have to like exploit a little glitch with save files or like you start a new game plus and then you just go back to your last save, which is at the end of the game. And if you beat the final boss, it's like it's like you the game thinks you beat the whole game on insanity difficulty and it gives you the trophy. Which is well, that's like Suicide Squad. All you had to do was buy the game and you beat it. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Yeah, minus, oh yeah, minus that did fun. happen. That was that was the yeah. glitch, the like opening <laughs> yeah. day glitch, right? It was like yeah. they logged in and, and they got all the achievements. It was hilarious. I'm like, <laughs> you paid what seventy dollars for this shit? Easy platinum. Well, and they're about to. I don't know when it's supposed to be released, but the Joker DLC, right? I think it's already out, bro. And how how is there a DLC for that game? Well, because because it's lot. It, they're supposed to be fucking. Like multiple seasons of all that bullshit, um, of that of a of a single player game. Yeah, good luck with that. That's so dumb. That's why they have less than six hundred we players. This lesson forever ago. What was the one? There was another one that was like that. Oh my god, what was it? Well, Payday Three came out, which you oh. can play by yourself, and it was on live servers, and you couldn't play for three weeks. So all of us who bought it were like, "This game fucking sucks. I hate my life." Oh yeah, well, had, yeah. A, had a massive surge, guys. There's 1,400 people playing it right now because of the new Joker DLC. Oh no wow, those are those people. are doing oh. this, this one's doing numbers, boys. Mm -hmm. Hey, it was at 600 last week. And what did it cost to develop? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, uh, Fifty million dollars? No, no, no. Like a wait, the DLC or the whole game? The whole the game. DLC because like, they uh, technically don't add that to development the, costs. The whole game is probably like two hundred fifty million dollars or more. <laughs> they got fourteen hundred. Oh God! Oh my lord! <laughs> Bro, that's wow. not even the population of a fucking county. <laughs> oh my yeah. god! So <laughs> right now, again, it had been chilling between like you know two, three, four hundred or whatever. Basically, life. It's this still is on life support, but there it is—a big surge for uh, the new <laughs> DLC that came out a couple days ago. Oh my god! Do you, wait, that's what, you remember wait that. what time of day is it spiking? Um, At let's see, nineteen hundred UTC. UTC. What is that? Okay, usually, hold on. Hold on. seven o'clock p.m. 
Yeah, but usually it's um, usually it's around midnight UTC where it peaks. And I don't I don't know what fucking <laughs> congratulations on your your sports game, Biggles. I'm glad the Mets scored. <laughs> Mets um, scored. Do you guys uh, remember that Avengers game that lost the studio millions of dollars? All I could like, it's this reminds me a lot of that where like they they added we'll ship the game with Miss Marvel, but not Hawkeye or Spider Man. That comes later. Yeah, that's so, weird. Its player base is its player count is spiking around two p.m. Eastern. No, nah, I think it's actually. Well, I, I think that probably that one did because that's probably when they released that DLC. But typically, it peaks around like that zero 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 UTC, which would be probably around seven o'clock p.m. Uh, Eastern, right? Uh, I I don't know. I might be wrong. Yeah, the, I I didn't get a straight across conversion straight from the search. I was a little mad. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah. So, um, Eastern would be like minus five hours from UTC. I think that's what it is. Oh. Um, I could be wrong though, but I'm sure somebody in the somebody in the chat will fact check me. I'm sure that yeah. I'm sure that'll happen. But yeah, the idea that they did at one point have fifteen thousand people that tuned and gave it a shot. You can't even get a tenth of that to come back barely for oh, your 15, for your DLC. For, for fifteen thousand for a game like that, it's just it's, it's dead it's on pathetic. arrival. It's pathetically is, bad to begin with. You're right. That that is, peop, this this company should be shut down immediately, and the people fired and put in a black book, never to be allowed to work inside any gaming company again. Fifteen thousand people. That is <laughs> shameful. But they had sweet baby ink, so it was worth it. Yeah, dude. Right. Because <laughs> now they look like a good investment to investors. Did I tell you when I went uh, to visit my family? recently hold on oh, i'm getting a phone call sorry <laughs> okay <laughs> um you no know you didn't tell us about that but go ahead chris you know what the best part about that's the front page of that sweet baby ink website is how they say hey if you consult with us we can open up more opportunities to get more demographics in your audience because they they want to convince these people if you let us consult with you, you'll make even more money by growing your audience. And but they're not. What happens? The audience gets smaller because those demographics make up five percent of the entire customer base. Five, because <laughs> yeah, exactly. they already have they already have eighty to eighty five percent of the customer base, which are men. They are already there. Then you have yeah, 15, exactly. it's the whole then you have maybe let's say 80%, then you maybe have 10 to 15% women who, who play. So what it's... they are saying, we can maybe get you the last five percent, but we're going to lose you a sixty percent. It's it's I, the whole cannot, myth of the modern fathom, audience. I cannot fathom why why I a a, a, a a developer would actually take this company serious. If I had a developing company, I would laugh at them, say, get the fuck out of here, piss off. So here's where you're wrong. Here's where you're wrong, Mr. So, J. Real, real quick, let me talk about this. Julia Hamels. There's nothing more cringe than when gamer YouTubers have a disdain towards sports. Uh, one, I was joking with Biggles because I, I hate the Mets who are his team. I literally run a YouTube channel called Sports Wars where we talk about fucking sports all the time. So nothing is more cringe than when someone's watching someone. They have no idea who they're talking to. That's what I think and, is cringe, Julia. And I'm a I've gamer YouTuber my whole life. who loves sports. Chargers for yeah. life. About my oh, ESPN alert, stuff. my ESPN alert of oh. my Boilermakers playing against Tennessee just came through because I'm rooting Boiler for my Purdue Boilermakers to finally crack through and make that final four again. I filled out a because, bracket because they got kicked out because bucks. I got fucking had the number one seed last year. Embarrassed, fucking embarrassed by losing that 16 seed because, yeah, I do care about sports. Um, we love the more, sports. you know, but go ahead. I'm sorry I interrupted you, Reefer. Oh no, you're good. You're good. I I feel that because that pisses me off. I played sports my whole fucking life. I like now you can argue whether or not golf's a sport, but I still play tennis and shit right now. Like that's a sport. I don't care how what you want to say. Try running against some of these fucks because they'll have you running your lungs dry. Like I I don't know what fucking you do a lot of running in tennis. Yeah, it's it's not fun. But anyway. What I was going to say is I saw a fucking ad 
for Vanguard on YouTube while I was vi visiting my family. For Vanguard? Like, like the investment co company, you know, the one everyone forgets right alongside BlackRock. And if you look into all of the sweet baby stuff, it's it's in companies owned a majority by them because they invest a portion of their uh, controlled funds into that shit, right? So it looks good for investors, right? The people they're advertising to, which is probably people my parents' age who did pretty decent in life, you know? Yeah, but they're not making any money, are they? Well, but investors that, that's are. That's what I'm saying. That's why they. Yeah, the do investors it. are, but, but not the... no, the, the, the investors the... aren't because they're they're fudging it. They make it look good right at the t end of the quarter when they would start reporting everything. Mm. Yeah. And then they draw, and then they shuffle shit around so that they can actually get back to good investments. It's so they don't the actually are... they don't actually give a shit about this. They're it just, just feels funding like a big it. Ponzi scheme. It just feels like it's one big Ponzi scheme. Yeah, well, pretty much. Investors are famously incompetent because if they if they had a working brain, I mean the investors at Disney would have gotten rid of Bob Iger a long time ago, but all he has to do is say, "Hey, we're announcing a whole bunch of new projects coming up and it because it looks good on paper, or they just go, "Okay, let, let's well, it, let's it, keep it, this it, guy it, on the board." If it was bro, that easy, he would have been gone a long time ago. It's not that easy. Bro, the craziest part is, specifically with this sweet, like, DEI in gaming shit, look into fucking NASEF. N-A-S-E-F. This shit is wild. I heard this on Side Scrollers while I was driving, driving to and from work at lunch, because I've got a 15-minute drive home, so I go home for lunch. Um, fucking, it's, uh, it's wild. It's DHS funded high school clubs to recruit people, essentially, and wow. to it, under the guise of tracking counterterrorism. <laughs> that that hmm. we they want to now consider gamers a terrorist group. Think about that. That highly radicalized. We, yeah, um, we, we are we are a bigger threat to democracy than illegal immigrants. <laughs> No, we're a bigger, we are bigger threat to their to their purse than illegal immigrants. Uh, let me let me read a couple of these super chats that came in earlier. Gabriel Knight, what's up, man? Who would normally be joining us for ten bucks has had a microphone issue. Otherwise, I'd be on. I hope Purdue kicks Tennessee's ass today. Now that would make me happy to see trash Vol fans in tears and fail to make the final four yet again. I don't really care about Tennessee tears. I do care about Purdue winning, though. That's what I care Shut about. The fuck um, up, Gabriel. Or are you a Tennessee fan? Yeah, I'm a Tennessee fan. All right. Um, uh, <laughs> just just, just you, kidding. You dick. <laughs> well deserved. Um, golden Oops. Nuggets for five. I don't know why people are hating on Dragon's Dogma 2. I'm enjoying it so far. Sydney Sweeney's my pawn. She heals me. Heals me good. It's because um, the performance. And it like fucking has like massive frame drops. That's basically the Is whole that on reason PC? yeah i i heard that the uh, right. the first their first or the first real patch they did really helped a lot performance wise mostly i had just heard people complaining about the uh number of like optional micro transactions that are in dragon's dogma 2 that was the thing i heard a lot of people upset about but from people that have actually played it i've heard a lot of good feedback of the i've game heard itself. I've heard from the game itself, ignoring exterior factors, it's pretty good. And then, yeah, like the weird number of microtransactions and what you can purchase with it was an issue I've seen. Like you can pay for fast travel. You can pay for like healing crystals or something else wild like that. It's weird. Wait, what? You, you can pay for fast travel? Yes, I know that one for a fact. I mean, that's like, uh, depending on the type of game you're playing, like, uh, say Star Wars The Old Republic, right? Like, Star Wars The Old Republic, you basically, you really get, fuck, if you don't pay for that game, if you're a free-to-play player, you're fucked. You're, you're fucked because even things like fast travel, it's like, goes on a cooldown, right, of like, 
fucking yeah. two or three hours or something like that. <laughs> Whereas if you're a pain member, you get it once every like couple minutes, you can fast travel. Yeah, uh, see, they yeah. they started doing that a while ago. I know Ubisoft did, like with yeah. uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey specifically. I remember oh, this God. because I had the I had the base game base version of the game because I didn't. By that point, I didn't pay for the more expensive ones. Whatever the cheapest one you had, that's what I got. You know, because I can Modern only buy a few games a year. But Modern Day Assassin's I, Creed microtransactions are terrible. They are so terrible. Well, yeah, so the like, way it works is like they they'll just make everything an insufferable grind and then we'll throw in your face every time, hey, if you pay real money, you can just skip the grind altogether. It's just like it, screw it you guys. doubled your XP gain or it increased your XP gain by 1.5x, right? It was pretty mm -hmm. wild and I was like, what the fuck? I mean, I was I was good enough at the game by that point because it was fairly easy combat it was just simple assassin's creed mixed with a little bit more like 3d dimension to it right a little more active combat it was it wasn't hard but so i was fighting bosses that i shouldn't have been fighting quote unquote that i was under leveled for but i noticed i was like ah, i'm having to fight these guys for a minute well that's my problem with modern day assassin's creed combat is if you don't level up but up, a lot of the harder enemies are just bullet sponges. You'll be hacking away at them for, for what feels like forever, and you'll barely make a dent in their health. Well, yeah, modern Assassin's Creed games are level gated, basically, right? Um, yeah, they're like, soft level gated. It, they're soft. Like you can go in there, but it's like it's going to be a fucking pain in the ass and take you forever to try to kill these guys at your level. It's um, like they want to be Dark Souls without committing to being Dark Souls. They're, they're discount Witcher three, right? Like, their Dark Souls like easy World. mode is for sale. It sounds like classic World of Warcraft. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like we, we sit in a lot of games. It's like, okay, obviously, you're, you're a lot access to that map, but if you go in there, things aren't going to go well for you. So it is. It's a way to kind of direct you towards the progression that you should be having technically in, in all those games. I. Uh, What's the most re is Valhalla the most recent recess? No, it's Mirage. Mirage. Mirage, yeah, that one just came out recently, right? I um, have no fucking couple clue. months I don't ago care anymore. I have not played that one yet. I played Valhalla. Um, I never played that one. <laughs> it was I the the last one I really liked was the Greek one. Um, Odyssey. 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 I I played the fuck out of Odyssey. I did too because I th I like I thoroughly enjoyed the story to that one, especially because I was you know heterosexual, <laughs> because that's what they all did back then, um, and like as like the the homosexuality is played up in Greek history, Greek and Roman history. It really is. Yeah, well, I, I feel like uh, I feel like we think that Greeks and Romans were just like thought nothing of it. Oh yeah, just you know fucking fucking some boy ass no problem like whatever i don't think that's how it really was i think it was much different than that but that's the way they, they, yeah they, I, they yeah. didn't consider it homosexuality per se tell us more yeah, yeah no, no but but it was it was normal for for the greeks for for uh, uh, an older man to have a, a younger boy under his tutelage and sexual favors was a part of it and it wasn't viewed for them as homosexuality the way we would view it today you know different times different ways of looking right at because they were slightly more degenerate than we are in a different way yeah well I get the, it. The, the greeks were quite degenerate i'm hey, saying it, a lot of times it's played up anyway anyway i don't want to get into that that's not what my point was the story let's talk was about good. the historical accuracies of how often greek men get fucked in the ass yeah uh, I, I all really the time talk about daily that. yes Anyway, what I was getting at is the Assassin's Creed Odyssey story was very entertaining and enjoyable, right? And because I was good at the combat, it didn't really hinder me a whole lot because I was working 10-hour night shifts and my free time was just fucking playing video games until I fell asleep because there was nothing else to do. Yeah. Well, you know what? What else you could do, I suppose, is you could get ready for the next Star Wars series. No thanks. No. Uh, like we all no. are. No. No. Oh, you guys aren't excited for that? 
I would rather no. join a monastery where I'm not allowed to talk for the rest of my life. And it looks like the chat wants you to do that, though. They're they're ruthless right now on you. Look at that. They don't what? like you at all, Mr. J. <laughs> what, one comment or something? No, it's two. <laughs> oh, two which is more than I get. Uh, you've yeah. been getting some. You've been getting some of this stream too, Biggles. Yeah, um, but they're just making fun of the Mets uh, and me liking the Mets. So <laughs> Gabriel Mets. Knight for five. Hey. If we get a Purdue Bama championship game, any chance of you and Jeremy doing a live stream of it? Uh, maybe. I they end up doing the national champion games on Monday or something, right? Maybe we'll see. I don't think Jeremy cares about basketball at all. Um, Steel Leg of History becomes a channel member over here. Thank you, buddy. Good to see you. Um, Graph Web for two for fuck's sake, cancel Disney Plus. I already did. Thank you, Graph Web. Never, never had it. it. Never, never had, had it. it. <laughs> and then Gabriel Knight for one nine nine. Tennessee sucks, Grandmaster Chris. Just a fact. Well, <laughs> Oof. well, you're you're entitled to your opinion. It just so happens your opinion is wrong. It is one hundred percent correct. Maybe you're you're maybe, a Mets fan, Biggle. Whoa, maybe whoa. he's saying maybe said he's, my name wrong. There was no comma Biggles. here. There was never. There's not a comma here, so maybe he just means that Tennessee sucks. You, like maybe that's that what too. he's saying. That too. Ha! <laughs> Tennessee glazes him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe that's what they're saying. Um, no. But something that's not getting glazed right now is the Acolyte trailer. Um, oh, God. Th this you... is one of those things where we've we've known it was going to be bad. Like, we've known there was the whole thing. Harvey Weinstein's former personal assistant. All the identity politics to play. All this bullshit. We knew it was going to be bad. But holy shit, I was not expecting the insane ratio that the Acolyte well, has had. Well, guess what, Ryan? You can't spell ratio without she... Uh, that's true. That's true. Uh, one way of putting it. Yeah, I hadn't really thought of it that way. But look, let me see uh, if I can get the updated numbers. 612,000 dislikes right now. Let me pop this up. Um, this is where we are. 612,000 dislikes <laughs> to less than 200,000 upvotes. So we're talking about, obviously, more than three times as many dislikes as likes. Now, and hold on. That's with the extension, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So that means that's a low ball number. Probably, yeah. It's probably a little bit higher. But this yeah, is the no, best we can do. But yeah, most people who would click that button do not have that extension, so it's not reported. That needs to be 100% understood here. This 612K is low. It could be like six, it could only be like 624 given like the community and the tendencies towards the internet, but. Just remember so, that is technically low. I don't. So I don't think it works like, hey, all six hundred and twelve thousand people have that thing installed. I believe the way it works is that they essentially do an algorithm and make some oh. educated guessing based on the number of people that do have it that do put it and the number of people that do have it that put like oh. all that shit, right? So this is this is their best estimate. It's it's can be off and can certainly be lowballed a little bit sometimes, but for the most part. It's, it's it's not terrible. Now. I yeah, no, I, I only looked into it at the beginning when it was like just the people reporting. But I've had it installed the whole time. Yeah, but uh and the thing was like I don't think that I don't think the trailer is very good. I don't think it was like the worst most horrific thing in the world, but holy shit, for normal people because that's what a lot of this is you got normie star wars fans that are being like that, that are hearing what this thing's about that don't like it and are just completely and wholeheartedly rejecting it uh that to me has been the most shocking thing well i mean to be fair we we knew we knew this show was that uh with the interview of of jody turner smith at, at, when she opened her mouth yes, at, that yes. issue, at that point we knew the show was dead because you knew this was one of the, 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 the main actors in the show who knew nothing about Star Wars. Nada. Sip. Star Wars care. is very, like, patriarchal and there's, there's too many and, men in power. Uh, uh, so Haley, so I'm, not surprised, I'm not surprised by the ratio at all. Queen Amidala, we, Princess we knew Leia, was coming. Mon Mothma. We 100% knew. But yeah, Star Wars is patriarchal. Yeah. We 100% knew that this was coming. This ratio was inbound. We knew it. 
I didn't I didn't think it was going to be this bad. Um, Maybe not this bad, but we knew it was too racial. We, we've never, ever seen a Star Wars trailer get ratioed, or even close to it. We, we've never even, like, 10% dislikes is the most we've ever seen, right? Like a, like a 90% like ratio. And that's for something like Ahsoka or... I guess maybe Rise of Skywalker was a little worse, but Rise of Skywalker was like 120,000 dislikes to like 700 or 800,000 likes. Like it was nowhere close to being in danger of a ratio. Mm. And uh, the acolyte is just, it, it just kind of shows where everyone is at that people's true feelings, are, they've like given up completely on Star Wars and they can sense the, just the woke bullshit a mile away with this. Yes, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe this is just one song. Yeah. The Star Wars fans as a whole have gotten to that point to, that Az got to when he was playing Starfield, where he just snapped and went on that rant. To, because The beautiful part is Az was proven right. He was. Yeah. yeah. But I, I may, maybe maybe the acolyte is now the swan song. It it, it, it maybe it heralds that this is it's the end now. <laughs> I we can doubt, hope. We can like, hope. Doubt. Gaming's got a long fucking way to go. They've been in, infesting this shit for a long fucking time. Right. Mm. Like this. Man. <laughs> like you said, Ryan, I did not expect the ratio for the Acolyte to be this bad because, as we've seen in the past, which shows like the Mandalorian and Ahsoka, that. Star Wars fans, a good bunch of them, are not the kind of people who will wholesalely re reject something from the very off. It's They're not like the Rings of Power people who, as soon as that trailer was revealed, everyone disliked it and ratioed it. To, well, well but, you can't compare these two because Tolkien fans, they're, they're fucking like the Taliban of gaming. They're like extreme in their love for <laughs> Tolkien. Yeah, but they are. It's really, really, they are extreme in... They they love Tolkien so much that they absolutely hated the Hobbit movies. They hated them. Yeah, oh, right? yeah. as they should. Yeah, Tolkien fans are like the valid the Victorians and the Filoni they, they, they fans are really, the special they, ed people. They are really conservative in their views when it comes to Tolkien. If it's not almost exactly to down to the last dot of the book, it's not good enough. So it, it, you can't really compare those two. Yeah, because to me, I feel like the trailer for, I I. Like, again, something like Ahsoka, I feel like there should have been maybe a little more pushback to that um, because it was obvious to me what they were setting up. But I, I feel like this is the first time we've really seen the public, ma before it's even out, just a massive wave of negativity like that. And it, it tells you how enough people have heard about Leslie Hedlund, about what this show is, that they can see right through the bullshit. Um, but... A lot of normies know. are waking up. My my friends who are most ninety nine percent normies, even they are beginning to say, "What is all this shit? It's the same shit every th single time. Every new show, it's gay, it's minorities, it's trans. What is this shit?" Even they are now saying, "We don't want to watch this shit anymore. We can't do a show this to our children." Wait, Mister J, you're not excited for the Frozen meets Kill Bill crossover? I hate Frozen. Me too. Well, you hate, you, hate, you hate Frozen, huh? It's just the most just... overrated, shitty movie ever. Yeah, it's for girls. Yeah, and and True. doesn't it say a lot about Leslie Headland that the main takeaway she had from Elsa and Anna's relationship was her queerness? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, like that. That is a weird thing. The idea that Leslie Headland liked Frozen because, as a queer person, she could identify with the story. Um, <laughs> That's because all the crazy people put Elsa as a lesbian. They're like, Elsa is a lesbian because she loves her sister. And you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> is that why I loved the Cosby show as a kid? Because, you know, I'm... Because you're a lesbian? Yeah, exactly. No, I'm, I'm... Wait, no, I'm not black. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's absolutely bullshit that this woman can only love something because, oh, I can see myself in it. What, why did we watch Family Matters and Cosby Show, uh, uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? Because we're black? No, because these shows are fucking glorious. That's yeah, why yeah. we watch them. We don't care that it's, it's, it's a black family. It, great actors, great writing, great producers. That's why we watch it. Yeah, Fresh Prince was but, fire, but I, though. I but she can't watch that, anything like unless... She, but she can't watch it unless she sees a lesbian action. Why? Okay, well... 
it's just it's just porn brain rot, dude. That's all it is. Like it's just hey, degenerate brain rot. Hey, I st I still tear up on that episode with Will's father on Fresh Prince. That's because that's well written in a good episode. Yeah, yeah I know. It has parallels to real life. Yeah, a strange concept. Uh -huh. Be something well written. It's a strange concept today. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I see somebody in the chat saying, I can't wait for Stargrift on Monday. It's the only thing keeping me from ending yourself. Nice well, fucking man. name. <laughs> hey, listen, I, I, I recommend you find something else to keep yourself going before uh, Monday evening. So, yeah, Stargrift um, was a good show, just as long as Theory wasn't talking. Well, it was just at the end of the day, like, obviously, me and Mahler have got a lot of stuff going on, and we just couldn't. I, an extra Monday weekly show is just like too much more that that I could really do. So, but it was it was good while it lasted. Good while it lasted. <clears throat> and right now, Purdue tied with Tennessee, seventeen seventeen, halfway through the first half. Mm -hmm. For anybody that's interested in, um, Doctor Fauci's prison butt for five. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Greek, Greek and Roman. Count. <laughs> Greek and Roman acceptance of homosexuality is a lie. History is written by urban elites, which, like our urban elites, embrace feminine tendencies. Um, Shake from Hunger Team for five. Baby boy, you ready for dragon on dragon violence? That is one thing I'm very ready for. Um, I, I'm very, very ready for House of the Dragon. We just yeah. saw the two trailers come out for that, the black trailer and the green trailer. Um, that's the starting out. The is on Team Black. I am on Team Black, and I'm not ashamed of that at all. Um, and yeah, so that's going to be a blast, because I know where we're at in the story. I know what we're going to see, especially the first couple episodes, based on some of the descriptions. And I cannot wait for uh, to be Dragon versus Dragon back at Westeros. What makes me even more excited for House of the Dragon is it's going head-to-head -head with the Acolyte. Acolyte's going to get destroyed by House of the Dragon. Didn't I it go against Rings of Power people. last time? Yeah, it did. And Rings of Power got destroyed by House of the Dragon. Oh, yeah, no. everybody was saying that they wanted to watch um, Rings of Power. They decided, you know what? I'm going to wait. I'm going to watch House of the Dragon first. I bet you they never watched it. Yeah, the, I, the, the Rings of Power super fans. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I'm, gonna... yeah, I'm thinking. Yeah, I remember that when they said, "I'm going to watch House of the Dragon and watch Rings of Power later." Ten bucks says she never watched it. The, the best thing so, to come out of Rings of Power was that one episode of Friday Night Tights when Gary kept pausing on Elrond and Durin's faces, and it looked like they were having sex. <laughs> give me the meat and give it to me raw. Give yeah. me the meat and give it to me the raw. You know, I couldn't even later. make it through half an episode of that shit, and I, I, got, I got high as fuck that <laughs> night. I, refu I refused to watch I it. you did. Nope. And I couldn't get through it. I apologize, Ryan, but like that because for I was for talking, saying that. Sorry for saying that I'm, you get high. Yeah, I don't know. Why do I, why do I fucking yeah. care? Okay, well, I don't know what's allowed on obvious. YouTube. I don't do this oh. shit. I see Gundam. Gundam does all sorts of crazy shit to avoid demonetization, <laughs> but I think he's fucking specifically targeted at this point. He's high all the time. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's been getting shit faced lately. Have you seen his streams? They're hilarious. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Speaking of Gundam, that anyway. last episode of Friday Night Tights with Gundam was hilarious. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Was my shit. It was. Uh, it, was it was a wild. Show. For everybody to laugh. Gundam's losing his mind, dude. Someone needs know, to I, save him. I think it was you that said it, Ryan. That each time Gundam is on, you have to uh, like, what is it? Uh, Feels oh, like everyone's like, trying to like up their game or whatever. Yeah, up their game. There. <laughs> yeah. And and also it was just one of those uh since there, we didn't we weren't reviewing anything that week and there wasn't really any uh, any like just a, a property to talk about. We we just kind of started spiraling in a different shit. And yeah, we had like nineteen thousand people watching us talk about fucking gay <laughs> black rappers and shit. Dude, uh, Shed was a yeah. Shed was a trip on Friday night tide. I love yeah, that. That was crazy. He called, he called as a pussy. <laughs> that stream fell apart. I doubt quicker the than white the Mormon bridge. knows about Puff Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you had no idea who it, like who it was. But yeah, Gu Gundam's not able to come on like super often. Obviously, you got a lot of stuff going on, but it's it's good when we get to see him. 
So he's constantly mm-hmm. staring at Adobe Premiere. Pretty much. <laughs> That's all he does. <laughs> he constantly he tweets from the most random fucking hours of the day. Just pictures of him sitting at his computer editing. I'm like, oh my god, you need to do something, dude. Yeah, but he always has he always has time to uh, tweet something on Twitter. It's usually out of control or something serious. He's a modern day Nostradamus, I tell you. Modern day Nietzsche. A modern day. Oh man! All right, I'm trying not to keep an eye, I'm trying not to keep an eye on this game and let it worry me. I have faith. <laughs> I've got faith in the Boilermakers to overcome the Volunteers. Um, I think it can happen. You but, know, I never go got into college sports. I just it it wasn't my thing. I just watched the pro shit because mainly I was playing stuff, so I only ever had time to catch the big games on like Sundays and shit. I um it, it depends. Like co- for college basketball, I'm not gonna be turning on a random college basketball game like that's between Vanderbilt and fucking Tennessee or something in November. Just not gonna happen. Um, unless it's like a team I'm invested in, or it's like a super good matchup. Um, like if you know UConn was playing North Carolina or whatever this specific year. But I, I do love, I always love postseason college basketball when we get into like the later state, later tournament, or sorry, later conference play into the conference tournaments. And now where we're at now, I fucking love college basketball. Um, I, I, like couldn't to think over, college- I couldn't get over two halves. That bugged me. I was like, no, nah, basketball's four quarters. <laughs> I like to think college basketball only exists during March. Um, so, yeah, true. Yeah. I don't even realize there's a season before it, you know? I'm like, That's yeah. the only reason I filled out a bracket was a buddy of mine from high school invited me to a $5 bracket tournament. I'm like, fuck it, I'll put five bucks in. I wanted to sh- I wanted to show, I just saw this. I don't know what the fuck this is from or what mod this is. But, oh, uh... God. Oh, no. Disney Combat. Looks good. Hold on. Um, oh, shit. Boom. Look at this. Disney Combat. <laughs> nice. Oh yeah, I've seen this. <laughs> oh yeah. Is this on Mortal Kombat? Co- yeah, because it's that's Mortal Jasmine Kombat. playing Serena. Oh, oh that's Pooh. Winnie the Pooh is Baraka. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this shit. That's amazing. I'd Hades. Shut up and take Hades. my money. Hades looked like Shang Tsung or Quan Chi. <laughs> Oh, that's Tanya. <laughs> Do this, Disney. That's a yeah. That's no amazing. kidding. You can get a lot of money out of that. <laughs> the monkey is fucking Johnny Cage. <laughs> <Who's the monkey? laughs> Sorry, I'm a fucking Mortal Kombat nerd, so I recognize all of these moves. I thought I was good. That was that's amazing. You know how much hilarious. money Disney would make out of that? Yes, that Disney did a Mortal fighting Kombat game. One. Uh-huh. Let's see. Like a real wild, violent one. <laughs> did, did you yeah. see the fucking Michael Jackson Mario, um, Super Mario edit? I don't think so. <laughs> oh my god, I'll find it. Hold on. And Rafiki, just... Rafiki about to hit you with the past. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's right. Not, not my stick. Um, somebody said UNC all the way. I'm sorry, Joseph Purdue. They're not going to go all the way this year. They got beat by fucking Alabama. 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 But um, what are you guys? So obviously we've been talking a lot this week about game industry and shit like that. We talked about it earlier about Sweet Baby Inc. All this fucking crazy shit. What are some games you guys are playing and actually enjoying right now? Doesn't matter if it's a sports game. Doesn't matter if it's one you've been playing forever and finally came back to it. But... Unicorn Overlord, Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, and Hell Divers Two. I, I've been playing Helldivers 2, and I've been creating more degenerates like me by getting another rank stack in Siege. Uh, I still play Ark Survival Ascendant, the updated version of the original game. What else have I been playing? This is Michael Jackson and Super Mario Brothers. Uh, Let's see it. <laughs> it's the full video, so you don't have to play the full thing, because it's like 30 minutes long, but... Okay. You can play like the first 30 seconds and you'll get the idea. 
All right, here we go. <laughs> oh, yeah, I saw that. I saw that. <laughs> oh, shit. Ruth came out and it's because so if you don't know michael jackson had a big hand in composing a lot of these snes era like games like a lot of the music sounds like michael jackson music in 8-bit form mm -hmm. and it's because he helped compose it oh look wow. at this outfit here we go where'd he go he finished the level. Oh, I get it. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> walking through him. Yeah, see. Oh shit, Star. <laughs> <laughs> this is incredible, isn't it? <laughs> I play that. Where, that whoever, came play up that. With this, whoever came up with this mod was high as a kite. <laughs> Fucking incredible, right? I'd, yeah, I'd play that. I'd play that. Exactly. By the way, I'm in. I'm a strong advocate. Michael Jackson was 100 percent, isn't it? Innocent. He was a scapegoat for the music industry. Mm -hmm. It it feels like obviously it feels to me like everything he did went into court. I, I feel like there's some questionable things about what's going on in his life that he would like want to hang out with kids, have other people feel comfortable with that happening. But in terms of all the like the nasty degenerate shit that he's being like alleged to have done, there doesn't mm -hmm. seem to be any proof of that at all. No, like I do think he's hundred percent innocent of all that stuff. I just think but, but, guilty. but I just think there there obviously is something Something wrong with somebody. Well, that... he was severely fucking abused. Like a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. The joke yeah. is, is his dad was the first man to beat the black off his child. Yeah, I guess oh, I guess he did right. accomplish that. But right, yeah, the... it, in terms of, I don't think he ever did. I don't think he ever touched a kid inappropriate. I don't think he no. did anything like that. Never. Um, but obviously, there's just something mentally not right with him. He um, was still mentally a child because he never got to have a childhood, essentially. Yeah, pretty much. He's been yeah. He's like what six, seven years old when he when he got uh when his career took off with Jackson Five. Yeah, but the funny part is, is he was a fucking ruthless businessman. If you look into his business dealings and the way he negotiated with Sony, because you have to realize this man bought not only Elvis's entire collection from Sony, but he also purchased the Beatles. Mm -hmm. one, and owned them both and his own music at one point. It wasn't until after he died that his estate sold both, like, all of those collections off. Back to Sony. Sony is the real fucking criminal here, but nobody wants to talk about that. Nope. Sorry. I'm yeah, I think the over. first time, the first time I'd really heard anybody, like, ask about it, I think was a Razor Fist video, like six years ago or something i don't even know mm -hmm. how long ago that was uh but up until that point i just assumed that yeah of course he did it that was like my assumption that was the jokes we told when we were kids that's what everybody thought um yep. but well yeah the only, like, person, the only person knows it is well dead so we'll never know well, I mean, no. there's other people that know it that have like well, yeah, other people that know, but people that people that were lied that anything happened to them and were like mm -hmm. caught in their lies. Like those people know that that's not the truth. There was a guy that wrote a like a fake fucking diary or journal about him, essentially, and fled the country so he didn't have to pay Michael Jackson. Right? I, he was he never you know that, lost in criminal court. He only ever settled in civil. Have you heard about the? Uh... Have you heard about what the fuck? Um, Corey Feldman, the the movie they're they're doing. No, oh, oh, yeah. Is is this the one on like that's advocating for him? Yes, it's like I have his heard of his this estate one. is like yeah. uh, responsible oh, for yeah. all it, the decisions. It's 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 his nephew Taj Jackson. Yep, it's his nephew. I don't know I'm if it's Taj. Um, he was doing something with it because he did an interview with Ra with Razor Fist like fucking years ago, and, and he Jeremy was promoting too. it on on like uh, 
like some Kickstarter fund he was doing for it. So the and, and I think this is a continuation of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, who is who is playing Michael? Yeah, who's playing Michael Jackson. That's Jackson. A good question. Samuel Jackson in biopic. Uh, Jafar Jackson. That's who. Uh, yeah. Jaf- yeah, Jafar. I knew he was yeah, Jafar is yeah. playing him. Taj isn't. I knew Taj wasn't playing him. I think oh, Jafar is okay, a I producer. Yeah, I think he's a producer. He may be. Yeah, I, I don't know what how much Taj. I, is I knew he wasn't. Like I that, knew he but... wasn't playing him. Sorry, I should have clarified. I knew he was more in like a production role than anything. Yeah. So I I am looking forward to that. Uh, yeah. Apparently, the people that made Leaving Neverland are really pissed about it. They're like, it's whitewashing everything. And of ironi- they are. ironically, talking about whitewashing and Michael Jackson in the same sentence. But yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I think for the most part, that Leaving Neverland thing was bullshit. It was um, bullshit. From yeah. what I remember of it. Just remember, Michael Jackson in criminal court, this is his official, re- like, official record in criminal court, was scheduled to go to court for fucking like six months and he beat 14 allegations four of which were misdemeanors in like four and a half months four and a half five months that's basically record fucking speed yeah and, and the uh, so, so that's it he, i mean he's innocent he was never convicted of anything guilty. i don't care listen if somebody has hard evidence on him bring it just bring it they uh be, because what they ended up the settling. Oh, there's Sleazy. What's up, Sleazy? Hey. How you doing, man? Oh, wizard is never late. Oh. With the stream, oh. and I uh, accidentally exited out of. Uh, I was talking to somebody and exited out of Streamyards. I love Streamyards. Was <laughs> <laughs> on your stream? You did that? Uh no, it was after the stream. I was talking to him for a minute. <clears throat> oh yeah, that and it probably like destroyed yeah. the. Uh, it probably yeah. destroyed the link. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You fucked yourself. Well, glad to have you here, man. Glad to have you here. Um, we've been talking a little bit about all the Gamergate, Sweet Baby Ink, stuff like that that's kind of developed over the past fucking month. It really, it all happened this month for the most part. Uh, a little bit about Star Wars The Acolyte, and now we're just shooting the shit about Michael Jackson. What are your thoughts about Michael Jackson? He's dead. Can we leave it alone? Well, he is, <laughs> but we're it. getting a Michael Jackson biopic. Got so. What? I, I, because of all the bullshit levied against him after his death, they mm-hmm. like to like to be fair, they they deserve to tell their side of the story at this point, even though we all know what's true. Like, like he's dead at this point. I think most of it's just grifting for what's left of his estate. Like, leave it alone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what. That's yeah. exactly what it is, and that's exactly what they should do. But that's scummy it, enough to genuinely be true. I mean, the dude wasn't a normal person. I'll I'll say that absolutely. I think a lot of it, a lot of the stuff levied against him has been people trying to, like, over the years, we've kind of come to understand that we should ask questions more than just automatically assume someone's telling the truth. And I I think we need to go back and reassess what everybody did and said. Yeah. Yeah, that that, that was kind of what I, like, I think he's innocent of all this stuff. I like of all the stuff that's been alleged with him, but clearly he's not a normal person. He didn't have a normal upbringing. There was something wrong with him clearly, Uh but that, that doesn't have any connections to any hard evidence or anything that that was fucking presented. Um, He seems like somebody who was just trying to like relive his childhood and none of the things that people put on him seem to have any weight whatsoever. Yeah, and I think that's I think that sums up perfectly. The dude never had a childhood. He never had a normal life. He never got to do things that normal kids would do. That's the thing about being a child star. That's pretty much it. Almost every child star. Oh yes. Speaking of all that shit, you guys been hearing about Nickelodeon lately? I was about to jump in the Dan Schneider shit. Uh Mm -hmm. All finally hitting mainstream. Holy fuck! Yeah, that's the that's thing for me. It's like. Man, this is like old ass news, you know. I know. Like it was like twenty, what, twenty seventeen or whatever when Dan Schneider actually got fired. Um, mm-hmm. yeah. So it's like, man, th- this stuff's been all out there, and I, I, I was a little bit disappointed in totality of quiet on the set. Um, I feel like 
they they let a couple of the kids instead of just making it about the work thing it was like i could tell i was treated different because i was black on set i was the black kid and it's like oh god of course here we are with this shit it's like let's focus on the like the real fucking shit that was going down there and not like someone or someone's mom's thoughts that i think they treated my kid differently because they were black um still at the end of the day there's nothing that you can connect to Dan Snyder other than the fact that he seems like a terrible person to work for and that he's a fucking creep. Yeah. But like in terms of any like him actually ever touching anyone or anything, there's nothing on that. Even in this no. that got presented, there's nobody that alleges that. There's no one you can find. Um, no. But he certainly likes to push the edge and put these children, especially like the girls, through weird shit and make them do weird things on set and in front of the camera. I don't, like I'm not minimalizing what likely happened on set, but it seems like anybody in any type of production with money is just gonna be a weird asshole. Like it doesn't matter if it's Hollywood or some, uh, like I hate to bring it up, but like Daily Wire or Breitbart Productions, like they they all seem like they have the, the asshole producers that do weird things. Yeah. Well, and, and I think there's like one, there's like one thing that to, to be an asshole would be mean to people. I think that should be like kind of expected a lot of times when you get into things in the industry. There does, there did seem to be a different level of stuff with Dan Schneider when it came to Nickelodeon in terms of some of the stuff that he was having the people do, like the sexualized things that he was having some of these people do on set. It goes beyond just kind of working for a jerk. Like when you're dealing with fucking like 15 year olds I mean, or whatever. Pe people who don't get to that level of success by being good guys. They just don't know. Yeah, yeah. Look, look at someone like Vince McMahon. That guy's an absolute yeah. dick, and he built the biggest pro wrestling company of in the world. I, I have success. some issues with the recent complaints about McMahon. The, the guy owns a <laughs> well, I, well, I don't think anyone can debate that he's a fucking asshole and probably like a piece of shit. You, you know what I mean? That's, that's, that's what I have. It's it's the yeah. the other things that people are accusing him from. I'm like, I have some serious questions. Why are you in? Why are you unemployed, living in penthouse apartments next to Vin, Vince McMahon? But you were <laughs> unemployed at the time, and he had to give you a job. What were you doing? What? Oh. How could you afford that? Oh, why, I, why I, now? I think that I think that he did all of the shit that he's alleged to have done. I just happen to think that all of it was consensual. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> that's oh, what yeah, I absolutely. Think. That's my belief. Um, now, could you argue that you like even with it all being consensual and everything still maybe remove him from his position at the company because of what he's doing with company people and on like in offices and shit? Yeah, you could definitely make that argument. But I, I don't think that uh I don't think that this woman was just getting paid all this money and was just against all of it for in so the long. End, in the end, the thing we're all most interested in is—is is P. Diddler uh, worse than a, a certain island owner, or is he not as bad as a certain? Uh, island I owner? think it, it's equal. I've yeah, read I, 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 on the same from... level. I I have I also have this. I think it's people. I, I think the P Diddy stuff is going to be more people's names that we're familiar with yeah. than yeah. Epstein. I think stuff. it's going to be bad. I think it's going to be bad. That man fled the country. He did. He just but ran away. Did Did anybody actually read the recent lawsuit that came up in New York? Uh, for, uh, I'm trying to remember. He goes by Little Rod against P Diddy. Did anybody no. take a look at that one? No, no, it's, I haven't seen. It's. Uh, <laughs> It's what is wild. it? Uh, it is, is that the one where he talks about Cuba Gooding Jr.? Yeah, and he lay, named so many more in it. Like, so yeah, I, I haven't got a chance to look at it, but I did see that there was you saw like rapper redacted, R and B singer redacted, but then Cuba Gooding Jr.'s name's just fucking sitting right there. <laughs> they must have felt he wasn't important enough to redact his name. They well, have, they had a bunch of screenshots of them. Yeah, they have so Jay Z in there. They have Beyonce in there. They got Cuba Gooding Jr. in there. They have uh, a couple other ones. I'm sure, like new school guys. But pretty much, it's it's the same as Epstein, just in rap culture. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's gonna be wild. I think it's going to be wild. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I strangely enough, I heard there was one rapper that years and years and years ago distanced himself from P. Diddy. Somebody who is, at this point, has his problems. 
let's put it this way, a certain Kanye West. Yeah. No, I mean there yeah, have been. Well, a couple... oh, I was I was gonna say. I mean, there's a guy that there's a few guys that are dead now. I heard that Kanye West uh, distanced himself from 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 P Diddy years and years and years ago. Yeah, yeah but Kanye, like... Kanye screaming about another thing. That's yeah, 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 he, yeah, he went a little like said, far, but he has his problems. He has his problems, you know. George Bush don't lie back, people. Yeah, yeah, it's tough to be like, well, oh. you know, Kanye started acting erratically around this person. <laughs> Something's clearly going on. It's yeah, like, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> that dude's entire life has been erratic, um, and including now. Well, Maybe less damn, so now he, than it has been before. God damn, does he make good music? Yeah, I used to, I used to love Kanye. I used to fuck like uh -huh. the first four or five albums. Maybe I used to Graduation, love Kanye. Graduation, man. Oh, that was hype. Yeah, gra gra I was more hyped for the release of Graduation maybe than for any any album ever because I love College Dropout, and Late Registration. Um, yeah, pretty damn good. That was the end of the C That was towards the end of the CD days. Oh, I, I like how we bring up Michael Jackson and it just evolves into every bit of entertainment being absolutely <laughs> I the know. worst thing on the face yeah. of the planet. Yeah, there's yeah. no yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's about... basically what this whole conversation's been. I've well, loved you... it because I've been able to talk about games and Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, go, we go from Sweet Baby Inc. to The Acolyte, and now we're talking about Michael Jackson and music. They're the same <laughs> thing. Anyhow, these things are so different. Thing. <laughs> they're, all, they're all mentally ill. You know that the, uh, that well, the movie industry and the music industry are why we have sh like shitty copyright laws, right? And why YouTube's uh -huh. got their their shitty copyright system. Mm -hmm. Well, there there might be a change coming to that copyright system. I'm keeping tabs on it in the uh, Supreme Court to see if it gets taken up, uh, but that might be okay. changing relatively soon. Like when we say uh, relatively, we talk in like five years. Uh, it would be probably in the next three to six months. Oh, really? Okay. I'd yeah. be interested to see that because YouTube, the way YouTube copyrights things like music is really weird. Like, for yeah. example, I tried watching like a playthrough of someone did of The Force Unleashed, and the music that plays over the opening crawl was muted. Like yeah, all John, was, was muted. John, John Williams' ass fucking he screws you. Every time you play a goddamn two notes of John Williams' music, he'll yeah, fucking what, hit what you. The yeah, fuck? and he's just a plagiarist. Yeah. He just steals old classical music. He's a plagiarist. Who, John Williams? Yeah. Go look at all... Go start looking at some classical music and then go look at his other songs. They're... You, you, you have to be a little more specific than just look at some classical music. <laughs> Talk to Ruben Christopher Hayes. He'll give you all the exact names of the songs and which ones they're ripped off of. Now, I will say that John Williams repeats himself a lot. Um, yeah. There's there's a lot of motifs that you can tell are very similar, whether it's like uh, whether it's from Star Wars or Indiana Jones or Harry Potter, like. He, like Jurassic, you you could hear it and be like, okay, that there's similarities. You can yeah, hear it. You, that's a style. That's a you, style, you know. If you watch yeah. the, the the Chamber of Secrets, there's that one scene when Harry and Malfoy like are chasing the Golden Snitch during the Quidditch chase, and the music is the exact same as Attack of the Clones when Anakin and Obi Wan are flying through the skyline of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 There's yeah. yeah. And, and also yeah. like and the the love um the love theme. Uh, for Han and Leia and Empire Strikes Back is super similar to the love theme in Raiders of the Lost Ark. Um, yeah, like the, the, you know, there's it, it's just little things like that here and there. But fuck I will you, not I like believe, John Williams. Yeah, I'll not believe, regardless. You know, I'll not, yeah. I won't believe. I won't stand for those allegations against him, Biggles. Just, you're trying to Michael I, Jackson. Do, man. do you do you need me to like find <laughs> the exact? fucking music because i will john yes. john williams is still one of if not the greatest film composer of all time mm -hmm. well but uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't change the fact that he's 90 years old and he has more money than he could possibly need why does he need to copyright everything well it's not him right like i'm not getting copyright strikes during my live stream because the dude's turning in watching a 600 subscriber channel it's because right. youtube's proactively searching out this stuff to try and copyright it so they don't have to deal with anything later which due, uh, there, there due have been court the, cases where people yeah. have have taken it to court 
and then been like, yeah, you can't activate this copyright uh, strike, copyright strike claim because you didn't actually do it. Somebody else did. But YouTube still uses that process because nobody it actually keeps them out of court it. and puts yeah. it on the creator. <laughs> Right. Mm -hmm. It's because of the fucking uh, like draconian copyright laws the U.S. has. It's fu they're insane. It's how it's how Des Disney just barely had to give up Steamboat Willie. What was that like late last year? Yeah, this year, I think. Well, yeah, was that this, this, year? this year, this year, this year. I can't, yeah. dude, I can't remember so much year. shit's happened already. Yeah. Yeah, so it, was, it was this year. Yeah. I can't believe we're fucking three months through this year. Like tomorrow's gonna be April. I know. I it's know. like, what the fuck? Wild. Time just moves so much faster when you're getting older. How old are you? Me? Yeah. Uh, Twenty six. Jesus oh, Christ! Fuck off. You ain't old. Oh, you're my off. age, motherfucker. Go to bed, boy. Oh, <laughs> what are you talking about, Mr. J? I will not take this. Don't tell me to go to bed. I'm a fucking adult. I make my own goddamn decisions. Thanks, Reefer. <laughs> I'll whoop your ass. Yeah, that's, you that's why I figured there. I figured you'd say like twenty-five or something, and that everybody would have a heart attack because you think that's old. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm technically yeah. Gen Zs, so hey, hey, Matt don't Walt, how dare you know no, I I don't belong to any fucking generation. Fuck these people. I don't fit in any generation. That's something very Gen yeah. Z to say. Um, Says the millennial man. <laughs> I I am technically a millennial, yeah. I like what I'm getting at is I don't give a shit what one I am. Because I don't fucking well, know. You can't yeah, put well, me in a box, bro. Yeah. I don't yeah, give a shit what unlike, box you put me in. And unlike sure. a lot of Gen Zers, I don't have the attention span of a TikTok video like the yeah, people who no beat Mauler. Well, I mean that's that's easy to avoid if you don't put spyware on your fucking phone. It's weird, like the comments I get in my comment section, or they're like, "Oh, this video's too long." Like, bro, how, how is an eight-minute video too long? Like, I uh... they've been watching me, I guess. <laughs> That's probably true. Dude, I remember <laughs> back in the day when YouTube actually prioritized five-minute videos. I remember <laughs> that me because too. all the Call of Duty guys were like, "Dude, five minutes of content? We get that in like two hours of recording. We could bang those out every fucking day." Yeah, see the thing, like I, I used to try to make my videos eight minutes long or or more because you get more, you get mid roll ads and stuff like that. Yeah. But it eventually got to the point where I'm like, man, I talk so fast, and I, I feel like if I'm gonna try to drag this out another like three minutes, is it real? Do I really want to talk about? Do I just want to talk about what I want to talk about? Get in, get out, say my piece, and move on. So that's what I started doing. Um. However, I will say if I ever get to the point where it's like I'm at seven minutes and 55 seconds or some bullshit by the time I've edited everything down, I'm just off seven minutes. Sometimes I'll put my outro a second time at the end just to get it up to eight minutes. <laughs> That's um, I will. I will do That's that. Fine. I will do that. I don't mm -hmm. give a shit about what, I don't give a shit works. about shit like that. But it's like if you've only got if you truly only have like five minutes of shit to to talk about, there's no need to drag it out like. Well, it's not like Nerdrotic or Clownfish when they go at least almost 30 minutes in a video. But that's because um, they got thirty minutes. They got more than 30 minutes of shit to talk about, and they're cutting it down so that it's easy for the viewer to digest. Mm -hmm. Well, that, it's a lot different when it's one person talking about something versus when you have multiple people talking about a topic, because a lot of great points can be brought up. Or a lot of editing. That's what Clownfish does. Or, or a lot of editing or showing like different interviews or whatever for context and things. There's a lot of different right. ways to do it. Uh, low watermark the chest is you don't want to end up sounding like the quartering. Um, <laughs> I, 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 sh quarter, shout out to Jeremy, but he does talk a little bit slow sometimes. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Jeremy. And shout, I, I, low, and shout out to low watermark. Low, low watermark just created a channel, actually. I, I, I just want to say know. thank you to the quartering for. Uh, Starting Friday Night Tights, according to Alex Jones. <laughs> according, according to Alex Jones, that's right. Yeah, I loved you on uh, what's it called, Friday Night Tights, and I, well, and I, love, I love that guy as. What well, it's true because uh, that that is the first time they met. I think was while Corden was on FNT, so I think he just yeah. assumed. Yeah, he just <laughs> got mi little mixed up there, but that was pretty funny. Well, I watch you gotta, you gotta think like how fan. fried is Alex Jones's mind? Like, honestly, 
he he he's Pretty another fried. one of those in like batshit insane clairvoyants. Um, you know what he's I mean? They're right like... so many times. It's insane, like the crazy stuff he says, and it's still oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Pretty damn accurate. And it, and credit where credit's due. When he fucked up bad, he made sure he did everything he needed to do to retract everything properly. And he said he would never, it would never happen again. And it fucking hasn't happened again. So based on what his track record, I can only assume he has solved that problem. You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm. I'm Whether or not you charge. like the guy, a lot yeah, of the shit gonna... he's. A lot of the shit he says is just fucking hilarious. It's entertainment. Yeah, I'm running out of jars for the Alex uh, Jones was right jar. Yeah, no I'll leave it at that. <laughs> you know how he constantly brings up the New World Order? What's funny is I uh, I went on YouTube and I clicked on a video to listen to the, the NWO's theme song from WCW. And there's yep. a community notes on there saying... The New World Order is a conspiracy theory yeah. about a to- to- totalitarian God. regime. Bro, you um, know what fucking freaked me out? Is what? when I, I hadn't been on a plane, well, pretty much since before COVID for a long time. The first time I got on a plane after COVID and the fucking airline had joined the One World Network or Union or One World whatever, I'm like, that is fucking ominous. I'm not yeah. sure I want to fly here anymore. Yeah, one time uh, during COVID, I I went I got on a plane so I can like visit my family for for Christmas, yeah. and it was a it was one where I had to s- take a stop and then get on another plane, and it took so freaking long for that plane to land that I missed my second flight, and I had to stay in in the city overnight. And you'll never guess what city I was stuck in. Baltimore, Chicago. Oh. oh God! Well, well, which, 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 were you, yeah, were you at O'Hare, O'Hare, or Midway? I think it was O'Hare, hmm. but just that one night I spent there, I will never go back to Chicago ever again. That place okay. looks like a complete dump. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. Flying foreign is the I way take... to go. <laughs> and I yeah. and I also blame Chicago for for giving us overrated queers like CM Punk. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I mean, I hate CM Punk, but I, yeah. I like I like Chicago. Like, I don't uh, know, man. I take your Chicago O'Hare Airport and raise it to fucking Seattle Tacoma Airport. That shit is awful. I hate flying through SeaTac, and I have to do. I had to do it a lot. I used to fly out of O'Hare all the time. Almost, uh, almost exclusively though, the past decade, I've gone out of Midway. The Denver airport's nice, though. Denver yeah, airport's is. weird. Denver airport's weird because it's in the middle of fucking nowhere. Like you, uh-huh. you literally have to drive like forty-five minutes away to get to the Denver airport. Yeah, um, I know. It's in, it's, yeah. it's like right up I seventy. Yeah, like it, it, should, right it should be illegal. It should be illegal for them to call that the Denver airport and assume that you're anywhere close to Denver. Like when yeah, you're but, there. well, technically, from what I gather, I think it's like out. It's like on the east of Denver. It's like in the. I think it's called Aurora, Colorado. That's usually where it is. I think technically it's in Aurora, yeah. Like, I'm listening to these problems, and, like, I had an hour and a half delay on one of my flights. I was technically going to miss my flight out of Korea. And when I got off that 747 from Atlanta to Korea, there were attendants waiting for me there with my name on a sign and bypassed entire lines of people, walked me to the front of security, and was like, you're not missing your flight. Don't worry about it. And they waited until everybody was on the plane. That shit doesn't happen in the U.S. Fuck no, it doesn't. No. It, that, it's like the Bill Engvall bit. Fucking, I found my son's IG Joe's under the stove when I pulled it out there. It was like an IG Joe prisoner camp. Get in there, get in there, get in there. Shh, no talking, no talking. <laughs> um, all right, we got a super chat from Gabriel Knight for five. Purdue 36, Trash Vols 34. Blew an 11 point lead. Barnes choking in March is as predictable as the rising sun. Thank you, Gabriel Knight. Keeping us updated. Yes, they go into half and produce up two. It was not looking great for a while there. I was a little bit worried, but they recovered. They recovered. So we should be good now. Um, Ryan, you going to go? 
Weasel, I will have no deep dish pizza slander in this fucking chat. Deep dish okay. pizza is delicious because I love my diabetes. I'm a scrawny guy <laughs> that eats you, like a fat man. I love, I love deep dish too. D yeah, deep dish is point. inferior. Inferior pizza. The only oh, thing that is blaspheming on up. pizza is pineapple. Are, are pineapple we going to is... really take Biggles advice on this? When no. live on stream, <clears throat> he said it's perfectly okay for two dudes to get married. They don't get married, <laughs> damn it! All right, all right, okay. So here's the here's oh, the here thing. Okay, about. Big old so <laughs> in in the game in the game, you can give the ring of the maiden, which is a wedding ring, to any character in the game that you have reached, and you don't actually get married to any of the guys when you give them the ring. You get something else that is not a marriage; it's a pact between the two players. A and marriage is never, a pact. So no, civilian no, civilian no. It, it increases the power of the rings. It's not act. They're not actually getting know. married. It is not know, a marriage. It is not. A, it is not a marriage. I, I and he makes fun of him too. Violin. I can hear a very he makes, tiny violin in the background. He makes fun of him. All right. It is not a marriage. That, that, that sounds like gay marriage with extra steps. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah, but to to end all this, deep dish is fucking awesome. It's very different from, you know, New York style or or another kind of East Coast, even like Boston, or even um, kind of more Midwest style, like with the thinner crust. Mm -hmm. But deep dish pizza is still fucking incredible. But it needs to go in like almost a different category because some yeah. deep dish pizzas, like it's it's almost tough to it, it's you're it'd be more likened to like comparing it to a fucking casserole than you would to a, a slice of New York pizza. It's like a meat pie. Yeah. yeah. A cheese and a cheese and meat pie. It actually sounds really fucking good. <laughs> that, Bro, good. I'm, I get family dinner tonight because it's Easter. Oh, by the it's way, just... happy uh, inner inner trend. Happy Easter. Happy yeah. Easter. Yes. There you go. <laughs> it it is, so it, yes. I don't give a shit what the other bit, what the other from, from, a Jew, about, from a I, Jew to the Christians. Happy Easter. There you go. Yeah. Um, Jesus are we are we supposed to day. respond? Christ is king, and you're supposed to get upset about that. Is that? Uh, oh yeah, I saw yeah. that tweet. Oh I my think god, it's really weird. Gosh. it gives me weird vibes. But I'm not gonna hate on you for it. You're Christians. I, what do I expect you to be like? Praise the Lord. Like, no, you're Christians. Very <laughs> inshallah, Christ, brother. Christmas, happy Easter, whatever. Do your thing. I don't care. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like I, I I don't expect I. Well, I was gonna say I don't. I don't feel like Muslims who you know pray five times a day go to their Christian and expect them to do the fucking same thing when they're not Muslim, right? But uh, maybe maybe Muslims not a great example of that though. Yeah, that's good. Say uh, I, I know. Rough, I know roughly when Eid is, and so if I catch it, I'll wish them happy Eid, right? But I don't know anything else. Um, but I'm not a dick. Allah is Akbar. <laughs> Thank you. Allah it's a trap. Akbar. Well, with, with, with that happy note, we are closing in on an hour and 30 minutes into the stream. Um, again, almost all the guys on here have channels or things like that to promote and subscribe to. So those are going to be dropping in the chat as they do their outros. Please go support them. Go check them out and see what they're doing as well. Um, Biggles, what do you got? Um, so I am on YouTube and kick. And it's at Biggles Mets. It's not the one that you are seeing in the chat. There's no underscore in the main channel. Uh, I also am probably going to be working for Culture Casino pretty soon. So you'll see me around in uh, some of Culture stuff. And I'm on an anime show with uh, Sporking, which usually gets hijacked. And we end up talking about non-anime stuff. And I try to always bring it back to anime. Um, and that should be on Thursdays. Um, so there's that. And I will put it in the chat. There you go. Um, Mr. J, what do you got going on, man? Uh, not much. I don't own a channel. I will never own a channel. I'm too lazy. I'm too old. So, yeah. I'm just watching. I'm grifting. Right now, I'm following the drama about the, who, who created Wolverine and who gets credit. Uh, Robert Mike Burnett was, let's say, mildly not amused last night in his, in his stream. So I'm following that, see where that ends. Hmm. Yeah. There you go. That's interesting. Um, what about you, Grandmaster Chris? What do you got? Uh, I I got nothing. Like, follow me on YouTube and 
Twitter and maybe Facebook if you want. Want I, I, I basically just post the comings and goings of entertainment. Although I will say before we head out, I want to give a special shout out to one Chrissy Mayer because based if my calculations are correct, the next time we do one of these streams, she will officially be a mother. Yeah. So, That's true. That, I think. Yeah. Should be. Yeah. And, and gotta love a, a woman who like will, will take a chance and be a, be a mother. We need more women like that. And also, like once again, screw the guy who whoever it was who pepper sprayed her. Mm-hmm. You're a dick. He's a dick. Yeah, it's pretty fucking gay. That's pretty gay. I agree. Um, and yeah, shout out to Chrissy. I think she's due in like two weeks or something. I think she said April three weeks. 19th. April nineteenth. That's what she said. Somewhere oh, so she there. got another. She's she's got like three weeks then. Okay. Yeah, three weeks. Um, that's what I heard. Like I'll that it could be wrong. Yeah, baby also, might not want to come out by the time we do it next. You never know. Yeah, also, gotta babies love are how, the best babies. Gotta love how Chrissy's the one person who can actually make Ryan smile. <laughs> I was watching some of her <laughs> old like Grace That's Randolph impersonations, and uh, I can't remember what she said, but she said something about like the the holdover is what Ryan Kennel <laughs> Ryan Kennel brings drunk women home from three at three a.m. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Was, that was funny. <laughs> Chrissy, one says, of the said, one of the only women that can make me laugh. Yes. Yeah, and Ryan said like they signed consent forms. It's okay. I, I don't remember that specifically, <laughs> but thanks for the reminder, uh, Sir Reefer. What do you got going on, man? Hey, you can follow me on Twitter if you want. I don't post much. I don't do anything because I only look at it on the shitter. It's not worth my time. It's a, on the on shitter. Screen. I'm not gonna link it. I'm too lazy. At Sir Reefer 76 on Twitter, guys. You can look at Twitter on the shitter. Um, crazy Actual. We haven't heard too much from you, man, but how you doing? I'm doing. I've just been listening to you guys. <laughs> nice. Do you, you have a channel, right? Um, right now, it's we're, there's nothing on it, but this summer, we're actually going to be... We got a big project we're working on over the next few months, and so this summer, we're actually going to be dropping something pretty big. Hell yeah, man. Well, definitely. We can definitely share that for next time or whatever and uh, and get people excited when that's ready to come out. So thanks for being here, man. Good to have you. Thank you. Um, Subhuman, who popped in a little bit late. How you doing, man? I'm good. I'm reading a book. What book? That's good. Uh, it's called uh, Legend of Galactic Heroes. It's a Japanese novel. I got multiple books I'm reading. Ah, well, there you go. Well, shout out Subhuman. I think you can probably, I think, I don't know if you're still doing stuff on your channel or not, but I'm sure Biggles can put it out there. No, uh, I'm not doing it on my channel. I got, I'm way too busy. Yeah, just busy with work and stuff. I hear you, man. Yep. Uh, and of course, last but not least, Sleazy. Where can people find you? What are you talking about? Uh, you can find me at Sleazy Society. Uh, I just did a live stream earlier with Potentially Criminal talking about some new Ace or Thorn lawsuits because that dude is terrible uh still covering relevant topics uh covered the black girl gamers stuff uh godzilla kong that just came out uh some stuff with uh sega essentially shutting down entire studios uh and friday was my birthday i'm 35 and uh unlike hassan i work a full-time job and i stream so screw you (laughs) there you go welcome to the 35 club and Bro, also his you're... meltdown in Discord. Oh my! Mm. Chef's yeah, and kiss. Sl- and it's Sleazy's so the kind of good. person who only has ten people watching his stream, and he's not like, "I'm gonna kill myself because I don't have enough viewers." Uh, like it's, a, it's a good Michael. outlet. Yeah. So Fridays yes. are gaming stream. At the end of the stream, I run a Chad show where we talk for about anything for whatever. Uh, Sundays are the Shameless Shekel Shakedown, where I cover topics. And then do videos throughout the week. The shameless shackle shakedown. I love that. I'm bracing <laughs> the Jew three times in a row. <laughs> That's good. Um, all right. Well, thank you guys for all joining me this w- month. We will be back. Let's check it out. Tentatively, last Sunday in April is the 24th. Or sorry, the 28th. So that is one, two, three, four weeks from now. So mm-hmm. right now, we'll mm-hmm. plan on meeting that time. Um, hey, that's my birthday. Weeks. Aha! There you go. Happy birthday to you. You get to spend it with us. 
Oh, <laughs> that sucks. I'm so you get, lucky. Your, get your birthday taken away by a woman. That's awful. Uh, well, so here's the thing with, with a mom that likes to party. My 21st was on Mother's Day. I went to the bar for the first time because she was out partying with her friends. I'm like, hell yeah, let's see what this is like. It was boring as shit. I sat there, had a couple of shots, and watched the baseball game. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, you went going mean. out partying with your mom. What do you expect? I didn't go out partying with my mom. She was somewhere else entirely. Oh, well, there you go. I have partied uh, with my mom before, and it was a good time, though. Um, Yo Pops becomes a channel member. Thank you, Yo Pops. Appreciate it. And uh, with that being said, we're going to end it. I will be doing my stream in an hour and 26 minutes. Hour and 26 minutes, I'll be over on the main channel streaming there. I still got to make a thumbnail and all that shit. So, uh, but I will see all you guys over there in just about an hour and a half. Thanks to everybody in the chat. Thanks to everybody for joining me. Support these guys. Go subscribe to them. And we will talk to you next week. Peace. Happy.